Michigan Student Aid is the go-to resource for student financial aid in the state of Michigan. For more information, visit our website, www.michigan.gov forward slash mystudentaid or follow us on social media at mystudentaid. On the outside, it's Gerald Jackson got out to an early lead, but he's being chased down, and it's going to be 100% on the lean. But it was real close between James Flournoy and Noah Stallworth. Gerald Jackson out in lane seven gave him a good run for his money. And we'll see exactly how they come in, and it's Noah Stallworth. 10-75-7. James Flournoy, 10 7 5 9. Dylan Brown in third with a 10 82 5. St. Ignis is out in front with Municine not far behind her. That's going to be. Elizabeth Becker of St. Ignis. She's a sophomore. Along with sophomore Madeline Parabaki of Butasine. We saw them duke it out in the mile. So it, let's see if... It looks like Becker is pulling away. Looks like she will do what she did in the mile and finish it out in first. Very strong finish from her. With a 2.23, Elizabeth Becker wins the Division II 800 meter run. Fowler and Addison, the two teams with the leaders in this particular race. And it goes to Fowler. That's Alyssa Vandegrift, the senior. After winning last year, she defends her her championship in the 100 meter hurdles. For the boys, you're gonna wanna watch Kevin Diebold of Gladstone. There's three Gladstone boys in this race. Uh, and that's big for the team standing. This is probably the most, their most important event. So we'll watch how that goes for them. I believe Calvin is only a um, sophomore too, but James McKnight. Oh, out and we front. have a fall, Marquette. Calvin pulled away while James McKnight knocked a uh, hurdle, but they all had great races. Approaching the final leg here, and looks like Bridgeport out in front. It's Frankenmuth, but a late charge. A late, a late run down the stretch by Corona, and the Cavaliers Nip Frankenmuth by one one hundredth of a second, 49.56 for Corona, Frankenmuth 49.57, Williamston third, Bridgeport fourth. He 
Dewey still in front, but he's getting past. That was one heck of a kick right there. Yeah, uh, it was not what enough, clearly. Was not able to hold on. And Ely's just starting his kick. He saw someone else and said, let me show you what's a real kick. Because <laughs> here he comes around the corner. He's going to have wide open space. Wow. Finishing. Is he going to negative split? He, I think he Broke negative split that. Breaking two flat. 159. Best, is, best time of the day by a lot. Uh, and Marquette's able to pass the Sioux. Marquette's looking strong. And she's gaining a bit on Menominee. I think she'll be able to catch her by this uh, finishing stretch. And she's able to catch her even sooner. There it is. Marquette passing Menominee with Sioux in third and Escanaba in fourth. You know, having a uh, really strong second and third yeah, leg. Yeah, that is, just, is a very is, strong leg by Marquette. Yeah, very strong. And, you know, that, that makes and breaks a race right there. You know, you got to have all, all four strong, but of those course. little two are just as important as the first yep. and last. And as Marquette seems to have this in the bag, but the Sioux is putting on the gas, leaving Menominee in the dust. And she is wide open. There is nothing Menominee can do to get back to her. And Menominee will end up in third. Marquette wins with a time of 4-14. So the two teammates, Magnell and Baldwin, Looking for a key win here to propel their team to a defense of the state championship. Magnell is in lane four, Baldwin is in lane five, and it is Baldwin in lane five that has the lead comfortably over his teammate. Here comes Magnell though, he's fighting for second place with Caleb Graham, and I think he got it, but the winner was Heath Baldwin from Kalamazoo Hackett. He claims the boys 300 meter hurdles state championship.